all of them related to food and the interventions, I mean, not just food, but basically the social protection interventions and impact on nutrition. I had had the privilege of going through three of the presentations and I really was uh, very much interested in finding out more about these interventions. Let me begin by asking Purnima to present the country, four countries study. Purnima, as you know, is a senior research fellow at IFPRI and uh, otherwise also a well-known expert on nutrition and food, not only about India, but also otherwise. Thank, thank you, Himanshu. That was a very kind, kind introduction. Um, let me preface my remarks and the presentation itself by saying that this is not, the study that I'm presenting today is not my research. I'm presenting it on behalf of um, a set of researchers at IFPRI that implemented over the period of three years uh, a set of four randomized trials in four different countries um, to look at the questions around uh, the differential impacts of food, cash, or vouchers um, on issues of food security. Um, we thought this was an interesting and important set of studies to put, uh, to bring to the audience uh, in India because it relates to issues of food security and to questions that we <coughs> have been discussing here for a while. They clearly will are not about providing any definitive answers or uh, responses to the decisions that India needs to make in relation to the social protection and social transfer programs, uh, but they provide a view of what happens and what you learn when you do studies such as this in, in well-designed well, well and well-set-up studies. So as Harold mentioned, uh, social protection, uh, which are you know, in the form of several different programs and, and transfer resources to the poor, reach an enormous number of people globally. Um, and again, as he emphasized so nicely, numerous evaluations have shown that the poor actually use these transfers very effectively. Uh, they buy food, they invest in health, they invest in education, things that really matter to, to people. Um, but there are several questions, especially in the context of ensuring household level food security. So Harold spoke quite a lot about nutrition. These four studies uh, speak very much more to the issue of food security itself as an outcome. So there are some issues that, that require attention and that benefit from um, thoughtful research being done on them. And the questions there are really, what are the relative impacts of providing this social assistance in the form of food or cash? Uh, there is a set of studies that, that looks at food transfers. There is another set of studies in, in different contexts that looks at cash transfers. But seldom have there been studies that have actually really tried to compare these head to head. In, uh, in good research frameworks. And, and there's even, you know, quite, there's, quite a, there's not a, a strong body of evidence necessarily on the relative costs of providing one type of transfer versus the other. Um, and then there's an, another set of questions around, you know, are these interventions sufficient to address uh, chronic undernutrition um, among children? So I'm not gonna really speak to that. Um, Akhtar in his presentation will cover that from, from a really important study in, in Bangladesh. Um, so at IFPRI, we call this the four country study, but uh, it, it's basically a, a set of studies that was done in partnership with the World Food Program in four uh, really different contexts. Um, the transfer uh, delivery was between six and 12 months of transfer, uh, whether it was food or cash or vouchers, I'll come to in a minute, given to targeted households in four countries. In Ecuador, the context there was urban uh, refugee population, in Niger, where the context was an agro-pastoralist community, fairly classic Sahelian food security patterns. Um, in Uganda, in a post-conflict setup, uh, where there were fairly high levels of seasonal food security. And in Yemen, so rural with high levels of chronic food insecurity. The evaluation designs were, were common across the four countries, so they were all um, cluster randomized uh, trials. The beneficiaries were randomized at the neighborhood level to receive uh, either food or, or cash transfers and, and in the Ecuador context only um, uh, vouchers. So the cash and the food were of equal value, uh, food basket of and the food basket was of staples, uh, pulses and vegetable oil, which for those of you who worked with WFP is a fairly standard package of the types of foods that are transferred in, in food transfer programs. Um, and aside from this, 
everything else was constant in, in these studies. So the targeting of the beneficiaries, the frequency, the timing of the interventions, um, all of that was, was the same. The outcome measures use two different measures of household food security. So WFP uses something called the food consumption score, which is their primary principal uh, adopted food security indicator. And what that looks at using survey uh, data is the number of times a food group was consumed in the last seven days, and, and then it's weighted, uh, different food groups are weighted differently. So you, you calculate um, a food consumption score based on that. And in three of the countries, the IFPRI researchers who did the study also looked at household calorie acquisition. <coughs> so the outcomes really there being household level food security. Um, now these can both increase together, um, but calorie acquisition can actually increase without much improvement in the, in the diet diversity. I mean, the, uh, Harold also emphasized quite substantially the importance of diversity of diets vis-a-vis -vis nutritional outcomes. Um, and then food, the food consumption score, which is the diversity, can also actually increase uh, quite a bit without a change in the calories itself if you're actually consuming uh, high nutrient but low calorie uh, foods. So it's important to look at, at both of those. Um, the, uh, the results here are shown as relative impacts. So what's the relative impact of the cash, of the equivalent cash transfer compared to the food transfer? Um, and, and the predominant takeaway from it, of course, is that it's, it's context dependent, and I, I think that's where we ended um, the, morning, the morning session as well. So in, in Niger, um, the, the cash was less effective than the food transfer in, uh, in relation to, to the food consumption score itself. In, um, in Ecuador, where they tested the cash and the, uh, the, the vouchers, the vouchers were actually more effective than either the cash or, or the, f the direct food transfer. Uh, but in Yemen and in Uganda, the cash transfers were more effective um, at assuring change in the food consumption score than the, um, the food transfer itself. Uh, in, in terms of the calorie acquisition, which was looked at only in three countries, it wasn't looked at in, in Niger, um, the cash transfer was uh, led to lower calorie consumption in, in Ecuador, both the cash and the, the food vouchers, as well, in Yemen as well. And in, in Uganda, it was, um, the uh, calorie acquisition was, was higher with the, with the cash transfer compared to the food. Now, the, the study team invested quite a lot in doing a costing of the transfer modality, so really thinking about how much would it cost to actually make those transfers. And the, the, the costing itself focused on the modality-specific costs because there are very different costs associated with transferring cash versus transferring, transferring food, um, and so there was a focus on that and also on, on the common costs that are incurred regardless of whether it's, um, it's food or, or cash. Sorry, um, and, and the question that's being asked is really what does it cost to make the cash transfer relative to the food transfer? And um, across, the, across the five different countries, it, it was much cheaper substantially to make the cash transfer compared to the food transfer. So it, it, was, uh, it was cheaper to do that. They then did a set of calculations to say how many more beneficiaries could you add to this program if you transferred cash instead of food, um, and, and the numbers there are, are quite remarkable. You can certainly add a lot more uh, beneficiaries to the social transfer program when you put the cash in, when, when, you, when you switch from a food transfer to a cash transfer. Overall then, when we looked at, at this set of studies where they looked at really head-on-head, -head, uh, rigorous, carefully done research the same group of researchers looking across these different studies, they found that in general, when you're looking at the diversity of the diets, which um, we think is critical not just for chronic undernutrition, but in general from the perspective of healthy diets, we should be aiming for more diverse diets as opposed to more um, calorific diets. The four country study showed that cash transfers often, but not always, because not in the case of, uh, of Niger. Uh, proved more effective in improving food, food security as measured by the food diversity score and did that at a lower cost. Uh, but the impact on calories is, is higher when the food is given. They also looked at a variety of other things and found that the cash itself had, um, 
had little to no adverse effects in terms of uh, creation of social tensions, intra-household bargaining issues, purchase of intoxicants, and things like that. Now, this set of four country studies triggered a lot of uh, questions because it, um, it answered some important questions around food security, but it wasn't designed to look at impacts on child nutrition, and so the team did not um, look at that. And um, based on the experiences from this, and then again in collaboration with the World Food Program, a subsequent study was designed in Bangladesh that specifically examines that. And Akta will now speak about that study. So again, I'm happy to take questions on this in, in the Q&A session on behalf of the authors. But remember, I didn't do the study, so all we can do is table some of those questions. It's possible that Harold may have answers to some of those questions. But um, we really thought this was a, a, an important a uh, set of studies to share in the context of food security, especially the diet diversity question. So thank you. Thanks, Purnima. And I think uh, 